When I was a first year student, my friends and I traveled all the way from Kolkata to Canada, USA, or the UK for university. Here we observe something funny. Many of us had somehow grown a lot more in touch with our heritage in one semester of living there than over a decade of living in India. One of my friends took up Bhangra. For context, I had never seen him dance a day in my life before this. I met a friend over Christmas break that year. He went to Toronto for university where you can imagine not that many people speak Bengali, right? He ended up more fluent in Bengali by the time we met than before he'd left Kolkata, where everyone speaks Bengali. Another friend in the USA started to get really into his religion and ritualism, again, something very new to him. And me, well, I purchased and ended up dressing up in traditional clothing more times in three months than in the four or five years before that time. When I came to Canada, I was cornered. When my friends came here, they were cornered. We were minorities for the first time in our lives, counting ourselves among the over 7 million visible minority population in Canada. And as a minority, there's a certain expectation of you laid down by society to defend your culture or represent your traditions always, all the time. As a member of a minority community, when you're outside, you're always representing your country. I can't count the number of times I've been asked about Bollywood, although I barely understand Hindi well enough to follow a full movie along. On another note, none of your actions ever go unnoticed. And whatever you do is going to reflect on your countrymen. If you're, say, Armenian, and you go on a date and the person doesn't enjoy your company, the feedback is going to sound like, yeah, I'm not into Armenian people because the one Armenian person I went out with was boring or something along those lines. We aren't always afforded an individual identity beyond our backgrounds. See, we're always representing our cultures, for better or for worse. As you can imagine, this creates a kind of pressure where people can feel cornered. Cornered into being a mascot for their culture because, because society refuses to see us as individuals, but just as ambassadors. Here's the thing though. Many of us are not great ambassadors for anything. And neither should everyone who moves someplace else be expected to carry the burden of always representing their communities. No, what this expectation does is force some people into places where they start to wonder where they belong. You know, because they feel that if they can't adequately represent their own culture, did they ever really fit in? Now, this is mostly common in second generation immigrants as they struggle to balance two societal identities. Because when you're trying hard to be or show just a part of yourself as your whole and entire identity, there arises a form of imposter syndrome. You are left wondering if you belong more to the country you've been living in or the country your culture belongs to. You start wondering about what choice to make culturally speaking. And it all starts with the expectation of being an ambassador for your background always. Let me be the first to say, there is no choice here. Societal expectations are set up with nationalist undertones where you're expected to choose where you belong to, this or that, communist or American, Asian or American, and so on. Depending on the decade, there have always been right or wrong choices that society dictates down. For example, if you chose to embrace your African-American identity in a Rust Belt town in the 1960s, you were wrong. But obviously, nothing could be farther from the truth. The thing is, you are just as much a product of your cultural roots as you are a member of the community you're living in. There is no choice to make because it's very possible to be a member of multiple communities and without being an ambassador for either. For me, I realized I was being unfaithful to who I was by constantly trying to solve this dilemma in the first two years of living here. I came here to offer myself more of a choice than who I could be. A first start, so to say. And to be shackled by societal expectations was very disappointing. I wanted to get into acting and drama, directing short films, interviewing people for podcasts. I wanted to create content. When I realized I was not trying to pursue any of this 
but instead I was spending my time fighting to prove to people from my country why, despite not being fluent in their main language, I belong to them. That is when I understood that I had fallen victim to societal expectations, a victim to societal imposter syndrome. Now, this kind of imposter syndrome can be scary. It can feel like being stuck between two worlds culturally, halfway here, halfway there, integrating nowhere completely. It's distracting, and it can stop you from achieving all the wonderful things that you're trying to achieve. And the first step to overcoming that is to understand you're not actually stuck anywhere. Just because society sees you as part of some community and expects you to act a certain way, think a certain way, as part of a hive mind, you don't have to see yourself in the same way. You are free to be an individual with your own set of thoughts, opinions, traditions, practices, likes and dislikes. You don't have to be an ambassador for a group. I want to talk about another form of social stigma. And this one is slightly easier to blatantly observe. Society sometimes expects a model minority. A lot has been said about this around a year and a half ago, in the summer of 2020. Basically, some minority groups are held as a gold standard and others are expected to follow suit, creating more pressure upon people just trying to do their best. There is a lot to be said about pressuring people to be something they're not, and uh, this model minority expectation can be very toxic. For me, the takeaway here is that society will often pit minorities against each other in a toxic game where the winner gets to be that model minority. Harvard Law actually has an amazing article about this model minority myth, which you can see right here. Therefore, to avoid being pitted against one another, sometimes people will subconsciously borrow elements of another group's culture. Then, they may form their whole personalities around it. This is not always intentional. As young people, we are more susceptible to absorbing mannerisms and behaviors of people around us. Yet, what's interesting to discuss is the blatant attempt to deny one's own culture that follows. Yes, that is something often observed among people who take this route of imitating another more popular culture. You could argue that, hey, at least you'll never be asked to represent a culture you're only borrowing from. But this imitation cannot come at the cost of completely sacrificing your own heritage. For example, in my hometown, what this imitation game looks like is Gen Y parents boasting to each other about how horrible their children are at speaking Bengali and how amazing they are in English. Hmm, not exactly a very flattering outlook. At the end of the day, you're losing your individualism inside an alien culture just because you want to fit in without the burden of stereotypes or expectations. I blame the setup of modern society for this problem. How often do we see members of diverse communities growing up and forget seeing them represented in positive light in the media? No, the media loves to perpetuate stereotypes. Hollywood loves Asian doctors, Indian programmers, Caucasian CEOs, Russian villains. You get the point. It remains difficult for a young person, especially second generation immigrants or a minority person growing up in the Western countries, to observe a positive role model from their community. So they have a hard time accepting and embracing their culture because the culture is so poorly represented. What I would like to say is that out of the two ways people commonly choose to overcome society's various stigmas, both have an innate price to pay. Firstly, if you're forced to always represent your community, you make it cocooned in your culture or end up fighting just to prove you belong somewhere. You don't have to be a master at Pangra to prove you're Indian, nor should your actions reflect on your community as a whole. Secondly, you don't need to sacrifice everything about your heritage just to prove to society you're not a walking stereotype either. Now, none of this is ever easy, but being aware that the choices society forces you to make are not choices that should exist it goes a long, long way. After I realized I was on the verge of getting siloed in my culture, 
I had to very actively pursue drama and acting, directing, podcasting, the things I wanted to do and the things I cared about. Once I realized I was an individual outside of society's expectations for people of my background, that is when I found a lot of success with my goals. It's not always simple fighting against generations of social conditioning, but if you want the next generation of people to be seen as individuals and not merely as ambassadors of some culture, uh, this concept is a good thing to stand up for.